Okay, so in this example, we've again got a pulley system, but they're not both travelling vertically. One's travelling horizontally along a table this time, which happens to be a rough horizontal table, so we're going to have to consider friction as well. And the other one is hanging down, so we're just going to be dealing with weight and therefore gravity there. Okay, so we can start off by sort of giving a little bit more information about each of the two diagrams that we've got here. So on particle A, which is 0.4 kilograms, we're going to have 0.4 g as the weight going downwards. We're going to have the normal going up. We've got tension in the string, and we've also got friction. So we can look at the coefficient of friction, which is given in the question. Mu equals 0.2. Add that on as a useful bit of information. And therefore, our frictional force going backwards is going to be mu n. Now looking at the blue particle, or particle B, we've again got tension in the rope, and then we've got weight as the force going downwards. So significantly simpler on the blue particle, so that's going to be something we want to think about as we're going through. We know that it's going to be the blue particle accelerating down, and therefore that's going to pull the red particle A across there. So that's our directions of acceleration. Okay, so starting off, we might want to first of all look at the blue section because it does look that much simpler and see if we can solve anything from there. So looking at the blue bit, we've got resolving downwards in our direction of acceleration 0.8g minus t equals 0.8a. Unfortunately, looking at that, we can see that we've got two unknowns straight away, so we are going to need to do some secondary equations for the red particle as well. Remembering, of course, that as it's a pulley system, we can't ever treat it as one whole body, especially as they're moving in two different directions. Okay, so I'll start off by resolving vertically for my red one, so I can find the value of the normal. So n minus 0.4g... is equal to 0.4a and a in this case is 0 because it's vertical so our n values is going to be 0.4 times 9.8 which comes out to be 3.92 newtons okay so we can use that value now as we go forward, we're again going to do another red equation and see if we can find out another equation which has got tension and acceleration in it so we can solve them simultaneously. So this time resolving in the direction of acceleration to the right, we've got t minus mu n, mu is 0.2, times by our n value 3.92 and that is equal to 0.4 times our acceleration. So now we've got equation 1 up here and equation 2 here, both of which are equations in T and A. So we can do a similar tactic to normal, equation 1 plus equation 2, so therefore we can do a little bit of cancelling. So we're going to have 0.8g minus 0.2 times 3.92, and that's equal to the total of our acceleration side, so 1.2a. Adding together the left-hand side, then dividing by 1.2, will give us our final acceleration value of 5.88 metres per second squared. So that has answered part A, which is what is the acceleration of the system. Now we can have a look at part B, which looks at the total, sorry, the final velocity at which B hits the ground. So we're going to have to use a little bit of information here to see how far B is going, Therefore, that's going to be our displacement. We've got an acceleration value. Um, hopefully, somewhere in the question, we can find out whether it's from rest or not. And looking very quickly, we've got this from rest term there. So we've got initial acceleration. So we should have enough to do our SUVAC calculations. OK, so in answering part B, immediately we're looking at velocity. So we're thinking it's going to be a SUVAC question. So for part B, we're going to start off by writing out our potential SUVAC value. So S U V a and T. So displacement, if we look back into our question, we know that particle B, which is the one that we're looking at here, is 0.5 metres above the ground. So uh, displacement, if we're taking down to be our positive direction, 
is going to be 0 0.5. Initial velocity, as it says it's from rest, is going to be 0. Final velocity is what we're trying to find out. And our acceleration is downwards at 5.88. So with S, U, V and A, we can use V squared equals U squared plus 2AS. So V squared equals 0 plus 2 lots of 5.88 times 0 0.5. And actually from this, the 2 and the 0 0.5, when multiplied together, will cancel each other out. And then finally, we're just going to solve to find that the square root is the velocity of 2.42 metres per second. Okay, so in part C, we're now looking at the total distance travelled by A before it comes to rest. So we know that it travelled at least 0.5 metres because until B hit the ground it would have been moving all of those 0.5 metres as well. What we need to figure out is how far it travels after B has hit the ground. Now obviously once B has hit the ground, suddenly the string's going to go really slack. It's no longer going to provide any tension, so it's not going to have that acceleration pulling it forwards anymore. So we've got to reevaluate the forces which are actually acting on particle A. So looking at our diagram, we can almost scribble out this section now, because once B has hit the ground, there is no tension. So what I could do first is I could resolve, and I'm actually going to take to the right as my positive direction, because that's what I'm going to use for my SUVAT later on, even though I know it's going to be a negative acceleration. Okay, so forces to the right are nothing. Going to the left, I've got minus mu, knowing that mu is 0.2, times by my value of n, 3.92. And I know that that is equal to 0.4 times by the acceleration. So my new acceleration is going to be minus 1.96 metres per second squared. OK, now I'm going to do SUVAT taking the right as the positive direction. Okay, I'm trying to find out how far it moves. And I know that it's initially released from rest, but I also know that by the time B's hit the ground, it's travelled 0.5 metres and is obviously no longer at rest again. So my initial velocity is actually what it finished at when B hit the ground, and we worked that out in part B. So 2.42 is going to be our initial acceleration of it. Now, over time, because it's decelerating, eventually the velocity is going to get to zero. And that's what we're looking for, because we're looking for the total distance it travelled until it comes to rest, as it states in the question. Acceleration, we've just worked out to be minus 1.96. OK, so we've got our three bits of data, and we're finding the fourth S. So we're again going to use v squared equals u equals u squared plus 2as. So 0 equals 2.42 squared plus 2 times minus 1.96 times by s. giving us a final value for the displacement of 1.49 metres after B has hit the ground. So as the question asks for the total distance travelled, what we're going to do is we're going to say that the total distance is equal to the 1.49 that we've just calculated 
plus the 0.5 metres that it had already travelled. So that's going to give us 1.99 metres. Corrects to three significant figures. I'm going to ignore part D for now and look specifically at the force exerted on a pulley at the end of this video. In this question we've still got two particles connected by a pulley, but rather than one going horizontally and one vertically this time, we're now going to deal with the additional issue of an inclined plane. We're told straight away that it's inclined at an angle of 25 degrees, so that's going to be a bit of information for us to use. And we're also told that we've got a coefficient of friction, so we're going to have to consider friction for this particle here, which is on a slope. We have got a normal force acting on the 5 kilogram particle because it's on a surface, whereas we don't have a normal force acting on the 10 kilograms because it's not resting on the surface, it's hanging in midair. Pause the video now, try and add all of the forces that you can onto this diagram, and then unpause and check how we proceed from there. So now we've got all of our forces involved, we can also have a look at the diagram itself and think about which way it's going to be accelerating. Regardless of the slope being there or not, the 10 kilogram particle is definitely going to be more of a force than the 5 kilogram particle. So we know the 10 will accelerate down, which will therefore force the blue 5 kilogram particle to accelerate up the slope. We're going to start off by looking at the particle on the slope and we're going to have to consider, as we normally do on an inclined plane, the perpendicular forces and we're also going to do a similar thing with the parallel forces. So we'll come up with two equations to start off with. So resolving parallel to our slope, we're going to get n minus 5 g cos 25 is equal to 0 and resolving parallel to our slope going up in the direction of acceleration we'll have t minus mu which is 0 0.2 times n minus 5g sine 25 and that must be equal to 5 times our acceleration. Okay, we can actually solve equation 1 which we have up there straight away, it's just a little bit of rearranging coming out to be 44.4 newtons. Okay, we're now going to have a little bit of a look at the red particle as well. So that's our 10 kilogram. We know that that's going to be accelerating downwards. So we've got 10g minus tension must be equal to 10a. So we've now got one equation here and one equation there. And we'll proceed as we normally do doing equation 1 plus equation 2 in order to solve them simultaneously. So here are my two equations added together. Looking first at t, so we've got this t plus this minus t, that gives us 0 so that goes straight away. Then we've got 10g which is come down here. Then we're minusing the 0.2n and this time I've substituted in our n value straight in so I've got no more normal force in there and we've also got a minus 5g sine 25 still in our equation finally we're going to add up the acceleration side 10a and 5a give us 15a altogether so now if we type all of that into our calculator we've got 68.4 being equal to 15a and our final division by 15 will give us an acceleration of 4.56 meters per second squared. Should the question then have asked for the tension, I would suggest that this would be the simpler equation to substitute back into. It's got fewer terms and an awful lot more integers, so much easier to deal with.
we're now going to revisit the force on the pulley question and have a look at that. So let's imagine that we've got this scenario where we've got an inclined plane at an angle of 40 degrees and obviously as we're usually dealing with inextensible strings we've got tension being equal in both parts of the string. So tension is going to be pulling the pulley down the slope in this direction and down vertically in that direction because of the strings that it's attached to. What we're going to have to do is to resolve in the horizontal and vertical direction and then we can use Pythagoras in order to find our full magnitude of the force. So starting off I'm just going to have a look at this, it's a right angle triangle so I know that that's 50 degrees up here. I'm going to resolve into components vertically and horizontally so that I can then make myself a right angle triangle and add the components together to get my final magnitude. So first up, resolving downwards, I've got 5 newtons from this force here and then I've got a component of this 5 newtons down the adjacent of the 50 degrees there so it's going to be plus 5 cos 50. Then if I resolve to the left this has no component going to the left, it's only going to be this 5 newtons and the opposite of the 50. So then I will have 5 sine 50. So I can redraw a right angle triangle that goes down and left. This component I know is 5 plus 5 cos 50. And this one I know is 5 sine 50. What we're going to find is the final resolved force in that direction there. So now we can use our Pythagoras. So we know that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. We might want to start off just to simplify matters by calculating these values. So 5 plus 5 cos 50 comes out to be 8.21 and 5 sine 50 comes out to be 3.83. So all we're doing is 8.21 squared plus 3.83 squared equals our resolved force squared. So our resolved force is square root of 82, which is 9.06 newtons. So that is the final magnitude of the force on the pulley. So just as a reminder, resolve vertically, resolve horizontally, make yourself a right angle triangle with the vertical and the horizontal component and then use Pythagoras' theorem to find the final magnitude of the force.